Hello and welcome everyone to our webinar, Intelligent Knowledge Retrieval in Food and Nutrition. My name is Philip Kobasik and I will be hosting the session and moderating it, as well as giving a short introduction, while my colleague Angela Bauch will be presenting more details. Both of us, we will be very happy to show you our ideas, our activities and discuss them with you at the end. We're very much looking forward to this. We at Biomax, we've been active in knowledge management and building knowledge management solutions for the life science industry and related industry for more than 20 years. Knowledge management for us means that we bring together relevant information and data to answer your specific questions. Data are very often very diverse at different locations in different formats, but also with different meanings. That is what we focus on, to bring this together to the benefit of our partner. Now we have applied this technology also to the food and nutrition domain. And in the following, we want to show you what we've done there and are happy also receive your feedback. So applying knowledge graph technologies to food and nutrition has a range of benefits. It, for example, um, helps or facilitates comprehensive literature search on, for example, food and nutrition trends and related sustainable technologies. Um, a benefit can be that you can screen and compare products based on ingredients, on nutritional value, or on the environmental impact. Moreover, um, you can make better informed food choices to improve the long-term impact of food consumption on your health and on the environment. And last but not least, I think very important is that the easy access to public information, but also to corporate or in-house information in the end, democratizes data access. Everyone, not only the database expert, can access data and information and generate value out of that. The technology we are applying here, and that's the only technology slide, that is called Ailani. Ailani stands for Artificial Intelligence Language Interface. On the left-hand side is depicted a knowledge graph in the center, which orchestrates the integration and uh, connection of all the different data sources, in-house and public, text, chemical structure, nutritional databases, genomics, clinical trials, uh, project reports, anything can be integrated via such a knowledge graph. In the center of this slide, you will see the end user who has an interface which is easy to use where he can just enter his natural language questions as if he would just ask a colleague a question and then receive results which can be direct answers to his question which can be statistics reports can be chemical structures or just background information all this is easy to understand and digest not exposing all this com complexity on the left hand side to the user but it's not only easy to use, but the, the, um, the quality um, that is produced with an iLearning search is more than 200% improved against um, standard search methods. It is the recall which is improved here in some examples, and recall means that you're not missing relevant information in a short in a few words. This is also an experience some of our partners are, are making here. Uh, it was, for example, the head of knowledge management and sharing at DSM, who said that using our approach and partnering, they were able to effectively manage and share knowledge across their science and innovation community. And he further says that knowledge, which is otherwise hidden and disconnected, is now accessible to their scientists and it saves them time and resources for gathering relevant information. So I think that is a pretty good statement on the benefit of the application of semantic technologies in this domain. In the following, now we would like to show you or dive a little, little bit deeper into, 
into the nutraceuticals and food um, domain by exposing three topics. With these three topics, please keep in mind, we have just selected some random but interesting topics based on some publicly available data, which we could use here. And uh, let's have a look at that. The first one, that is a topic, it's a simple, fast and comprehensive literature search on nutraceuticals. Here, you get a quick overview of what's available in the domain, in the public domain, what people are doing, what they, are, what they know, what their plans are, giving you a head start, for example, for a new project. Second topic is informed food choices and food product comparisons. So here we're diving down a little bit deeper and looking into also data and numbers, content or food content and so forth. The third topic we want to address is the easy access to corporate knowledge, which I think is very important. At the end of these three topics, we will have a question answering session um, where we are very happy to, to discuss and, and, and answer questions. If you have any questions in the meantime, you're welcome to use your, your chat functionality on the right side of the screen. Enter your, your question already now while it comes up and we will go through that. Yeah. Now I would like to hand over to my colleague, Angela, who will lead you through these topics. Thank you, Philip, for the introduction and hello to everyone. Um, as Philip mentioned, uh, we see a need in simple, fast and comprehensive literature search to identify opportunities or questions like you might have asked yourself, like, what are current trends in the nutraceuticals market or what are sources for nutraceuticals or how do competitors position their products. In the following slides, I will show you how we address this with Vailani. And let's start with the first question and enter it into Ailani. Uh, Ailani not only handles keywords, but you can also enter natural language questions as the following. So what are recent launches in the nutraceutical market? And you're presented with answers, like the first one here is extracts of omega-3, polyunsaturated fatty acids and photosynthetic pigments. The second one is on microalgae and cyanobacteria-based food supplements. You always have the answer below in yellow highlighted the text uh, excerpt where it was extracted from and the literature evidence. As a third um, answer, we also have a statement on the global nutraceutical market, which is proposed to expand and reach about $340 billion by 2024. And with these answers, we actually learn that micro or marine algae are a trend in the nutraceutical food supplement industry by providing these essential nutrients like omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. And actually, one of these industries is aquaculture. Aquaculture is one of the fastest growing animal protein food producing sectors, which supply actually more than 50% of the world's fish for human consumption. And as a matter of fact, with natural resources uh, declining fish, aquafish cultures have been fed also with terrestrial plant sources, which are low in omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. And the observation was made that salmon, which was harvested, contained much less of these beneficial nutrients. So now the tendency is that in aquaculture, you need to feed also supplements like these uh, omega-3 fatty acids. So let's ask the question, who established the joint venture Vera Maris? Vera Maris is a joint venture setting up standards for sustained food production. And uh, Ailani retrieves the answer, Ivonic and DSM, which are, have complementary capabilities. So DSM has an experience in cultivating marine organisms, but also in experience in biotechnology. 
whereas Evonik has also a history in amino acid biotechnology and fermentation processes at the large scale. And now we would like to have get the original publication about this innovative approach. And within Ailani, we can do this with sequential steps. So here you see these, these are, we call them these smart breadcrumbs, where with each uh, search step is tracked. And here in the first step, we enter marine algae. The second step, we enter the omega-3 fatty acids. And then we refine to the two companies, Royal DSM and Evonik. And thereby we retrieve the original documents, which is published in Biotechnology Letters in 2007, microbial and genetically engineered oils as replacements for fish oil in aquaculture feeds. And here we also see the highlighting in alignment with the breadcrumbs. And if you want to learn more about approaches like these or also other technologies using the extraction of these fatty acids, Ailani also provides automatically similar documents to any document of interest here. So similar documents to this one can also be uh, retrieved within Ailani. All right, so now let's go back to our first question and see, make this observation that two of the first answers were both retrieved from the Journal of Marine Drugs. And we can take advantage of this uh, information in Ailani by doing a search on nutraceuticals and then limiting our search results only to the Journal of Marine Drugs, which we can do here. And also to ask then the following questions like, what has been published on marine-based nutraceuticals or what are conferences on marine products or who is working on marine-based nutraceuticals. So by doing this search step, first entering nutraceuticals and then Journal of Marine Drugs, we get an overview also of all the publication uh, about the time range. So we see that uh, within the last four years, there has been a significant increase in publication on nutraceuticals. And on the right, we see also the ratio of article types which have been published. Like in orange, you see all the, the number of reviews, about 30%, but it includes also the conferences. And with this, I can move now to find conferences on marine natural products. I uh, refine my results to article type conference. And in the next step, I'm only interested in conferences in the last eight years. And I can identify this interesting international symposium and European conference on marine natural products. And if we go to the details of this conference, which already is taking place for the last 40 years, I get additional information about key sponsors like the Royal Society of Chemistry or the publisher for the Journal of Marine Drugs, and in addition also a company called PharmaMar. Within Ailani, we also can get information about companies, where it is located here, Madrid, the capital of Spain, with also some links to the original site. And with this information on the key sponsor, we also, it suggests that PharmaMar is working on marine natural products. So let's move to the next question and ask uh, Ailani, what are the products of PharmaMar? And we retrieve two uh, answers like tribectidine and lurbinectidine, which are two anti-tumor medicals. And we can also have more information at the nutraceutical, the drug level. For here, the first one is tribectidine. We get the structure of the, the drug. We also have the number of drug targets. And here on the right, we also see all the adverse events associated with this medicine. Another example is the second product of PharmaMar, which is plitidepsine. Plitidepsine is um, a natural compound which is isolated from a tunicate. 
And here again, we have the chemical structure and as well also the clinical trials, which have been running uh, or are running also in different indications here, lymphoma and so on. Okay, so to summarize this first topic, we can see all the search strategies we did during these examples. We retrieved answers, also documents with the evidence. We can also retrieve similar documents as well as to do a document analysis over a certain time range or document types. Uh, additionally, we also have information about companies, sponsors or conferences and also on chemical compounds, nutraceutical medications, get more information about the drug itself, similar compounds and clinical trials. And now let's move to the second topic, which is about informed food choices and food product comparisons. And in fact, the market for plant-based, vegetarian and vegan diary alternative is booming. For example, diary alternatives such as soy-based drinks and foods. And if you are one of the product producers and you want to improve the nutrient levels of your products, you're very much interested in how does my product, for instance, compare to a competitor product or how can I optimize my product in order to follow the trends which are out there like vegan, vegan diary and plant-based foods. So in the next example, we can see here search for foods, here in this case, soy yogurt, which is in the system. So we have um, this example about more than 300 different soy milk yogurts, which can be compared along with all other yogurts around the world and at the different uh, nutrition label uh, levels. So the Nutri-Score, the Eco-Score and the Nova Group. And here in dark green, that's always the best score. So Nutri-Score A and Eco-Score, you see it's the Eco-Score B, it's a bit less. And what is also striking here that the Nova Group is an indicator for how much your, your food is processed and these uh, milk alternatives based on soy or other ingredients are normally highly processed. That's why on the Nova group, they have a less good score. Additionally, I can also uh, compare different fruit soy yogurts side by side based on carbohydrates, for instance, fat, salt or energy levels and have here kind of a nutrition profile comparison. Moreover, I can also compare or get detailed information here on one of these Greek style soy yogurts. I get all the nutrition facts and similar food products so to this Greek style yogurt. So automatically for each product in the system, we have about two to three million food products uh, ranging from all over the world. We have this similarity search. And what else you can do, you can, uh, you might be interested to compare your products to similar products. For instance, I would like to compare my instance of products from my competitors. And this is done in this example with 20 similar uh, yogurts to this Greek style yogurt. And they are then plotted against fat, uh, carbohydrates and energy. And my yogurt is here shown with this diamond. And you see here, with respect to the fat, it's on the high end, where with the carbohydrates and energy, it's at the low end. And we can have this detailed list and the export option in order to work further and optimize then your food production. The next slide is the summary about this topic. So in addition to documents, we can also identify food products and similar food products and nutrition facts, as well as do comparison at the nutrition level or at the nutrition label level. Um, now I would like to move to live demo where we can identify the healthiest and most eco-friendly diary alternatives 
by asking the following questions. So what are good non-dairy alternatives, for instance, or which plant-based milk is best for the environment, or which food brands have milk alternatives with the best Nutri and EcoScore, or what are studies investigating cardioprotective effects of soy milk. And with that, I will now share my screen. Can you see my screen? I can see it, Angela. See it. Okay, fine, perfect. I, I think if the rest is not protesting via chat, they can see okay. it as well. Well, that's the entry page of Ailani, which consists of a simple search box where you can enter keyword, phrases, or direct questions. And let's start with the question, what are non-diary alternatives? What are non-diary alternatives? We are redirected here to the document-centric page, which retrieves documents based on your keywords. And here we have an overview about the content sources. So we have results within the medical literature like PubMed Central or Medline, but also within clinical trials and also about on Wikipedia or regulatory journals like EFSA, the European Food Safety Agency Journal, also news feeds like the Food and Drug Administration News. And here we have another version of representing results, for instance, the answers. So these are the direct answers when we entered what are non-diary alternatives and we retrieve the following answers like fish, eggs, nuts and seeds, or here the almond and soy beverages, or here yogurt and ice cream derived from coconut, or here the diary milk alternatives, soy, almond, coconut and oat, or fortified non-diary yogurt and non-diary cheese. So that's the easy access to Ailani that if you want to get an overview about any question you have, you get first uh, direct answers and then can follow up these by checking up the literature by clicking on that, or you go directly into the keyword results and further refine your answers here. So for instance, now we would like to address the question, what are clinical investigations where soy bean milk has a protective role for cardiovascular disease. So what we can do, for instance, we can also um, yeah, filter for article types, article comments, case reports, or by journal type, nutrients, uh, the food journal, frontiers in microbiology, um, but now let's go here and refine for soybean milk. And now let's go refine for cardiovascular diseases. And here below we have these other types of uh, refiners. Here let's open the health refiner, which is represented by this so-called sunburst diagram. This is representing also the uh, ontologies which are used, so it's a kind of a controlled vocabulary. And here this uh, size of these pie charts also indicates the relative hit rate within uh, the document set. So for instance, within this set of 1,600 documents, we have only few hits within the disease of behavior or the disease of kidney disease. And if we move to the disease of anatomical uh, disease. We have here, for instance, the cardiovascular system disease. We have more hits here than the muscular system disease. So now let's check uh, the cardiovascular system disease, select that and refine our documents to cardiovascular system disease. And as you see here, we have 564 results. And with each uh, refining step, an additional breadcrumb is created. And this is also indicated in the same color of the highlighting in the text. And in the next step, we would like to uh, refine on some of these healthy um, nutrients of soybeans like flavonoids or these uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Let's start with flavonoids. We can also 
enter here. Select that one, a new breadcrumb is created and also highlighted here. And with these hits, we also cover synonyms. So we have also isoflavones here, or here in the case of cardiovascular system disease. As you see, we also have cardiovascular uh, disease synonyms or also uh, hypertension, also derived concept. So that's really, we have a good and specific coverage of the results. And now we are down to 244 results. We can now select the document source refiner and see, okay, we are interested in clinical trials and select those and retrieve here, for instance, a study on the comparison of plant-based versus animal-based protein on anthropocentric and metabolic parameters in obese subjects. Or here, another example, the soy treatment evaluation in metabolic syndrome trial. These are two or three clinical trials we can receive. We can select those. We can, for instance, export them also to your bibliographic citation manager, or we can go one step back and also check for full text articles within the clinical area. So we choose the article type refiner and go here to clinical and have here an additional document on soy milk lawyers blood pressure in men and women with mild to moderate essential hypertension. So here you can see that with this search strategy, I can easily come down to clinically relevant studies on soybean. And here within the search history, which is automatically captured for each user, you can see all the searches you have been running and you can recall them at any time by clicking on any breadcrumbs or you can bookmark them or set an alert and receive an email in case new results have been retrieved for your same query just due to incoming new publications. But now let's address the second question, which I wanted to show you that we wanted to compare and see what is the milk alternative with the best environmental influence here. For instance, on the right, we also have some additional information here on soy milk. We have here about 1,000 soy milk products, which can be also here monitored at the different score levels. So we have this about 1,000 different soy milk products here at the nutrition score level. So here, this is in dark green, we have the nutrition score A, about 75% have a Nutri score of A, and 20% the next best Nutri score of B. And in the case of Eco score, about 18% have Eco score A and 80% Eco score B. And here, as already shown in the slides before, the Nova group represents the processing status of the food. And here, these soybean milks have a less good uh, processing status. And if we compare here the soy milk, for instance, with, in this case, the almond milk, we see that at the Nutri-Score level, they are kind of comparable. So the milk is slightly better. It's mostly score A, whereas almond is score B. But at the Eco-Score level, for instance, almond has yeah, a worse score compared to uh, soy milk. So with respect to Nutri-Score and Eco-Score, soybean actually wins due to high protein content and being environmentally more friendly. Now, if we want to find out what kind of milks in soy have the best Eco-Score and Nutri-Score, we can go to a specialized search, which is the food search, which can be accessed here within the third tab. I moved to here and I have here about 80,000 food products, which can be filtered using different kinds of filters. You see here we have the different scores, the Nutri-Score, the Nova Group, the Eco-Score, but also here we can filter for food brands or 
by ingredients. We can check which foods with which added with some vitamins or containing allergens. Or here below, we can also check which food products contain high sugar, low sugar, or refined by protein content. Now let's focus on soybean milk. So here we not only have products solely on milk, but also other products which contain soy milk. So that's why we are refining further for plant-based milks and get here to 794 soy milks. And now we want to compare them and filter for Nutri-score A, and we are down to 560 products. Now we want to combine it with an eco-score of A, so the best at the Nutri-score and the best at the eco-score, and we are down to 125 soy milks, which now at the end we also can see, okay, which are the brands with the best Nutri-Score and Eco-Score. And we see here the brand Bjork or Nutrition and Santé or Provamel and so on have the best scores. So that's how you can use these food search to identify products which have the best scores. Alternatively, what I've shown with the slides, we can also go back to the plant milks and just select the first five and do an on-the-fly analysis. Here, select another one. And here we have the option to compare these five products at the nutrition profile. So we see here these different soy milks, they have different amounts of carbohydrates. So two of them high here, at the fat level, there's also one and the energy level, or compare at the nutrition scores and here we see again that soy-based milks have a pretty good Nutri-score, high in, in protein. Eco-score, they're also pretty good. And with processing, uh, with like the pro highly processed, they are not so good. Okay, so that's what I would have liked to show you live. I'm going to stop, share my screen and go back to the slides. I present slides. Okay, that's where we had been. So what I've shown you here in the live demo that we retrieve live answers, relevant answers. We get public documents. We could see the food products here from Open Food Facts. We can do nutrition score comparisons, but we also get information about drugs and clinical trials. And now I would like to come to the last topic of our webinar, the easy access to corporate knowledge within Ailani. So wouldn't it be interesting or cool for you to have your own documents within the system and have them compared and get direct answers or get similar documents or alternatively, to have your food products in the system to do these nutrition profile comparisons or comparisons at the nutrition levels, or have, for instance, your drugs or nutraceuticals in the system and get similar compounds. Yeah, this is all possible by integrating your proprietary data uh, within the system and having it semantically analyzed aside with the public content and thereby giving you access and easy access to public and your corporate knowledge just within one system. And on this note and this outlook, I would like to stop the presentation and we are happy to take any questions. Yes, thank you very much, Angela, uh, for this quite comprehensive <laughs> walkthrough. Um, yeah, let's have a look for potential questions, comments, feedback. Mm -hmm. Just as said earlier on, I think some people have already done it. You can just type in 
your questions here in the comment field on the right hand in the chat functionality one question what i which i can already see and i think everyone can see that is can you also see patent databases within nilani so a patent in the current demo version here which you've seen we have integrated uh, the set of COVID-19 relevant patents, which we have integrated in a collaboration with Sagacious IP uh, two years ago. And currently we're also integrating all relevant patents and are in the process of indexing them. So we will be able to screen also for patents, yes. Okay, I see also a question. How hard is it to integrate company internal content? Yeah, as mentioned, in a collaboration, we first need to identify the documents of interest. So, for instance, all PowerPoints or Word files, we support different object types so we can enter everything. And in the end, it's uh, really an IT infrastructure project. We need to provide specific connectors and different sources of data security and, and see you for data compliance with your organization. And we also have the option for customers to upload a defined small set of documents to upload within Ailani and to have it side by side compared to see how it works. So that's possible. And I think if I may add one point, it is, um, so the answer is it is not very, well, complicated to start integrating data because you can start with a small number of uh, internal documents as described by Angela, and then slowly move on to integrating, say, in-house databases and other things. So it is a seamless process or a stepwise process where, where things can be grown in accordance to needs. Angela, do you want to take the next one or should it read it out yeah. to you? What would be the cost for the subscription? So you can go to oh. our website and see uh, we have a cloud version and we also have an enterprise solution for integration of proprietary content. As just discussed, it can be documents, but it can also be databases. It can be your antibody inventory. It can be your food products database, or it can be your IP portfolio. So we can integrate also proprietary databases or licensed databases. The same also at the document level. Yeah, this so is where the enterprise is. Mm -hmm. But we are not giving here numbers. Something can see, be seen on the web page and then further discussions can be taken offline. Yeah. There's one more question. What advantages does your platform over, offer compared to the Open Food Facts platform available for free when it comes for the food product search? Uh, we have the option that we can customize searches or analysis. So I've shown you some examples how we can do on-the-fly analysis by integrating similarity searches of products and then based on nutrition or ingredients, then do these dashboards. So that's an advantage. And on top, we also have all the literature search. So we have combined all the literature search combined with the open food facts. So we have actually mapped the food categories of open food facts to our internal food and nutrition ontology. And that's a big advantage that we can do within one system, the literature search, document, IP search, and the food search. The food search was this more specific one based on open food facts. Yes, so please keep in mind, as I said in the beginning, we used here Open Food Facts and, and some other data sources as we well, wanted to use some publicly available information. The value for many people comes when, as Angela pointed out, you combine that public knowledge with your own in-house knowledge and with maybe some third-party content, as just pointed out. I'm just looking here through all these different chat windows and try to make sure that I didn't oversee anything. Angela, do you see something? Oh, I have another question here which pops up. Where in Ailani is artificial intelligence used or applied? 
Okay, yeah, we have different ways where we apply AI. One is the question answering. So the feature which we used at the beginning that it's in machine learning based algorithms, you can just enter a natural language question. So that's one where we use AI, but we also use the query to question AI, where we have just noticed that users enter just keywords and we just transform it based on neural machine translation uh, keywords into questions and then the system retrieves in the yeah, better results. Though we also have applied AI to named entity recognition to extract triples. That's another place where we use AI or also one aspect which we didn't address in this webinar uh, we also can extract chemical information from documents by optical structure recognition. And these algorithms, they are not always perfect. And here we have actually introduced a classifier for false positives, which are then extracted from the data set. And that's where we also apply AI. So in addition to extracting information based on ontologies, we also can extract directly chemical information by OSR. So this is important for companies having all documents with chemical structure drawings. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing here one more, which says microbiome data play an increasing role in nutrition research. Does your software also include microbiome data? Mm -hmm. I think I mean um, Ailani currently contains here a representative set of genomes and we are currently extending that to include all model organisms. The full set of bacteria, will, most of them will be included. And actually Biomax has a history in genome sequencing and was also involved in the full yeast genome sequencing process. And Biomax was founded by a spin-off of the MIPS at the Helmholtz Centrum and has also, yeah, we have experience with genome data, genomic data, genome annotation. Good. And another short one I see, is Ailani more for small user groups or for corporate uh, settings? And For both. If... We, yeah. It can Go be ahead. useful for both because we have... As mentioned, the Alani cloud version, which is based on the public content. And what you've seen today is the flavor, it's the persona, it's addressed into the food and nutrition research domains, but we also have a healthcare persona or a neuroscience persona, which is in development or one for industrial biotech. So we have these preset uh, accounts. And as soon as you enter, and integrate your own propriety content, it's an enterprise version. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For now, I cannot see any additional questions. If the organizer sees something, please let us know. Otherwise, I would suggest, well, I would like to thank you for attending. Um, you have, well, you have our contact details up here, Angela's and mine, email and phone numbers. Please feel free to contact us for any follow-up questions. We are very open to, to understand your, your requirements and, and your opinion. We are looking forward to, to engage into some further discussions here. I think the presentation, the recording of this presentation will be available in some time, maybe two weeks time. Um, we have also uploaded here an, a handout, which you can see on the top right in your menu, which is a, well, a version, a PDF version of the presentation you have just seen. You are welcome to take that home with you, share with colleagues, and then also come back to us. So if there are no further questions, thank you very much to everyone. Thank you for attending. I'm looking forward to well, be in further contact. Yeah, thank you. Thank and bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.